everyone, and welcome to today's drama hospital recap. As always, don't forget to subscribe. My tripod's falling. So you don't miss any of our recaps or videos. Cassie is doing vlog Samber, so make sure you go check that out. We went to the city the other day, and the video came out really good. But you're here for Jammer Hospital, so let's get right to that. And I know it's like a normal time. Unexpectedly had uh, off today, and I'm knitting up a storm. So this is like my break. I've been knitting for probably close to seven hours already by now. But let's get to it. So at Nathan and Maxie's tripod, please don't fall. Uh, Nathan catches Maxie breaking into his laptop to find out the surprise. And she's like, what? No, I wasn't doing that. What are you talking about? And uh, they decide to practice their dancing for their lesson tomorrow. And Maxie gets a text and Nathan winds up like falling over and hurts himself. I honestly have no idea what that whole deal was about. But then he has to go off to work and he's just going to be at the desk. At Kelly's, Curtis and Jason loop Sam in on the van, the driver, Derek Wells Media, that whole thing. Julian, uh, they got, they're working with the theory that Julian staged the bomb and he was going to have Pete drive the car alone and die and frame Sonny. So, like, kind of feel bad for Pete real fast. And Sam thinks the van was really easy to find. You know, everything else was so well orchestrated. Like, this seems like a really big loose end. Uh, why be so reckless? And Curtis brings up bringing their findings possibly to the police because, you know, they'll have more information. And, you know, Jason is just thrilled with that idea. And, no, he thinks the cops would just double down on Sonny instead of opening another investigation because just with the history and, you know, with kind of, you know, just the whole atmosphere of everything. And Curtis says he has an in and really wants to try. So Jason asks him to just sit on it for a bit and they have to leave because they have an appointment. At the PCPD, Jordan is catching a hard time from the mayor. Misha, don't make that noise. It's like nails on a chalkboard. One second. And she gets a call from Andre, but before she could pick it up, Andre winds up ending the call. So uh, Curtis comes to see her because sit on it apparently meant for like a whole five seconds. And she's immediately dismissive and he says he's there professionally and he has important information for her. So then he says he's not working for anyone. You know, she wants to know his angle and winds up handcuffing him to a table because, you know, you said you had relevant information. So uh, she says like she could do this the hard way, detain him for 24 hours, and he tells her about the van, that it belongs to Derek Wells Media, and, you know, he's like, well, we were investigating her, we found out, and she's like, who's we? And he's like, um, I misspoke. So she winds up uncuffing him and wants to show him something. So it's surveillance footage from the floating rib parking lot, but from, like, a red light camera, like, it's a totally different angle. And, you know, she's returning the favor. At General Hospital, Anna stops into Andre's office. Uh, she asks him to consult on one of her cases, and he's interested. So Andre knows the name Theo Hart. Uh, he was part of a diamond theft ring in Ukraine, and they packed up shop before they could get caught. So Andre thinks he, Valentin, could have an inferiority complex. And Anna says Valentin, you know, stammered when she was pushing about his father. And she thinks there's more to this than that, though. Like, it seems like Valentin knows her like she's stuck on the eye which I think is the biggest clue to that theory that either Valentina Stavros or like something like that because the eyes wouldn't change, you know? So Lulu is still in another part of the hospital. Lulu is still thinking about Charlotte. She felt a real connection towards her and it's like the same pull she feels towards Rocco. So she asked Dante if he thinks it's possible that Charlotte's her daughter and maybe Claudette was a surrogate. And Dante says, you know, Charlotte can't be hers because Charlotte isn't Stavros's, so she's Valentine's. And she's like, well, Stavros and Valentine are brothers, so maybe the results were misinterpreted because nobody was thinking that. And after some more talking through logistics, Lulu backs off. So Lulu, after Dante leaves, drops something and finds like a black flower or something and... I think, I don't know, I, I have like, you know, one of those old school TVs, you know, still has a big back to it, it's a square, I know, so exciting. Uh, so, 
on another part of the hospital. J. Sam has a doctor's appointment, and Sam asks Jason if he still wants to leave for Aurora. So he's kind of cooled off on the idea. You know, there's so much going on right now between Morgan and maybe, you know, being far from Jake wouldn't be the best thing. So they'll figure out what's next later, which I think is a really good decision. I don't think they're going anywhere. And I think maybe Sam schooled off on the idea and she was just kind of testing to see where Jason was at, you know. So Dr. Lee comes in. She Does anyone else want Dr. Lee to, like, have an actual storyline? Because I do. Like... For realties. And not, like, just some tragic storyline. Like, I'm, like, a real storyline. Come on, it's Dr. Lee's turn at bat. She does so much for us. Can't we give something back to her? Uh, so she does an ultrasound. They don't know if they want to know the sex of the baby. So Dr. Lee writes it and puts it in an envelope. And they can choose if they want to know. Which, come on, how did that envelope... You put that in an envelope, it's going to get opened in two seconds. I have no patience. Like, I ordered the majority of gifts for, you know, this upcoming holiday season. And I always have to wait till much later because I can't keep the secret, but I ordered way too early in the month because, you know, availability of stuff. And now it's like killing me to keep the secret, you know? Anyway, at Windermere, Nina steps over and the place is very Christmassy. So she talks about her childhood Christmas. You know, it wasn't very joyous. It was like really only for show for outsiders and for business and stuff like that. And the, he tells about like the crook at his school had knit him a scarf his first year at school and he's since lost it because he checked it in some um, baggage that got lost so the ship captain comes in and says the weather is too bad and no one can leave the island so nina feels manipulated like valentine paid the captain to say this and you know she leaves and about three seconds later she comes back in the house just drenched i'm like how badly is it raining to be just looking like you got out of the ocean you know so some of Britt's clothes are still there apparently and so it's some dry clothes for Nina to wear and the two of them really get to talking and they kiss and now end scene. So Lulu comes to see Maxie. She needs her opinion. She thinks Valentine has her daughter and she needs help proving it. Dante talks to Nathan. He thinks Lulu may be on to something. So, um, yeah, that's, I, I, I thought I was going to hate this, but I don't. And I don't know why. I still don't understand, but I'm excited. Uh, Anna seems to be headed to Bedlington. Jordan and Curtis make sure Sunny doesn't, oh, Jordan asks Curtis to make sure Sunny doesn't take the law into his own hands, and she knows he's working for Jason, so he is like that in, and she's trusting him with this, and she wants him to come to her first with information he finds, and he notices something on the surveillance tape after she leaves, and Curtis... Curtis oh calls Jason I'm like Curtis falls Jason what does that mean no Curtis calls Jason uh says he went to the police and Jason's like mm. and Curtis's like wait wait no I have something big really big the biggest and uh yeah so I'm interested into what it is but we will not find out until tomorrow which will be a normal later day <laughs> but uh thank you so much for watching today's recap it feels good to not be doing this at 10 o'clock at night I was up till four in the morning knitting last night so Gotta get back to knitting. I will see you tomorrow from Wardrama Hospital, and I hope you have a great day.